Hello and welcome to this Python and Django live code hangout. We're working on the open source project, Open Civi Wiki today. And in this session, I didn't do too much coding of my own. I did a little bit of documentation. Most of this was spent reviewing a bunch of uh, other contributors as part of the Hacktoberfest event and our All Contributors Initiative. Hacktoberfest encourages people to get involved in open source projects by contributing to issues that are typically labeled as help wanted and good first issue. By adding the Hacktoberfest label, it lets all Hacktoberfest practitioners know that this particular issue has been selected for the event as well as the Hacktoberfest organizers. And I'm typically only labeling um, good first issue and help wanted um, with the Hacktoberfest. Some of the issues are more complicated or would you know require more in-depth knowledge of the project and maybe not so good for your first time uh, contributing to a given project. So we've left those ones off of the, out, out of scope of Hacktoberfest. So without further ado, let's just go through what uh, changes we've reviewed merged, closed, and left open today. There's a bit of a mixed bag. So one of our core maintainers, Gorkum Arslan, contributed a bug fix. We had accidentally removed our base JavaScript file from the base template, meaning it was breaking most of our uh, other pages. Uh, so I had removed it. <laughs> and Gorkum caught that. I was trying to clean up the backbone templates and I think I removed it um, mistakenly without testing the, the implications of that. We're porting over for context, we're porting over from backbone JS to uh, just Django templates to make our developer experience much more streamlined so you don't have to juggle multiple uh, languages. In any case, it was a bit <laughs> premature that I removed this uh, from our base template broke some things and Gorkum kindly fixed it. So we merged that. You'll notice that uh, Gorkum also added the Hacktoberfest label to indicate that this was part of Hacktoberfest. And we're trying to do that with all of the other uh, issues. I th I'm not sure you have to label the pull requests, but we'll try to do that as well to just make sure people get credit for that. Another issue, 1343, was to use IPython for our local development shell. All these issues have the overarching theme of in improving our developer experience, making it easy to work on the project, have good developer ergonomics, good documentation. We really want this to be uh, a nice project to work on from a community standpoint, since it's community maintained in particular. But any project should have these nice uh, developer experience uh, kind of changes. Uh, I'm using a book for most of these called uh, Improve Your Django Developer Experience. Highly recommended if you're interested in uh, working on Django. So the changes here were to add IPython as a direct dependency, uh, as a development dependency, I should say. We, we don't necessarily want to use IPython as a dependency in production. I'll will, I will add a note that poetry doesn't um, kind of dis... Uh, well, basically, even though this is marked as a development dependency, Poetry will um, solve the dependency constraints to find the, the latest compatible versions of all of the dependencies, production and development, in any environment. So even though we're only intending to use this in the development environment, Poetry is going to still include it or consider it when resolving dependencies in the production environment, which might not be um, desirable in the long run, since this has quite a few uh, sub-dependencies that it added. I'm just kind of skimming here so you can get an idea of the number of green lines. Uh, when you see that word package, it's adding a new package to the mix. So even though we only defined one top-level package, IPython comes with several sub-dependencies. In any case, we went ahead and merged that. Thank you, Hasteb. Hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. And as part of our all contributors initiative, anytime somebody contributes to our project, 
And anyway, not just code, there's many ways to contribute. We're going to add a comment to that, either a discussion or pull request. Uh, sometimes you're contributing ways that we don't capture here on GitHub. We'll, we're trying to be inclusive of all contributors. You could be a financial backer. You could be coming up with ideas, finding bugs, hosting community events, helping us with accessibility, user experience. There are so many ways to contribute, and we want to try to affirm all of those by following this all contributors guideline. So essentially what it does is opens a pull request that adds the contributor to our contributors section here, as well as what they did. So here's Haseb and their code contribution. You can see that we've got, I think, uh, over almost 90 contributors now. We're at 87. So let's take a look at the next contribution. Aporva working on issue number 1349. I want to point out something. We're following a process since we have so many issues and contributors. We want to make sure that it's clear at any given time who is working on what. And to do that, we need to assign people to issues. That way we know that one or more people, you can assign actually multiple people, uh, are working on a given issue. So that anytime somebody's viewing our backlog, all of our issues, they can say, okay, this is assigned, that's assigned. Oh, but these are open. Maybe I can work on one of those. It's just a way of communicating um, what's available and what's not. So we have a process. Basically, you have to stop by the issue, claim it. I'll acknowledge somehow, and then I, I can assign you. I've made a mistake here and there. I, I forget to assign somebody, or maybe on mobile oil, I don't press the confirm button, or I'm not sure. It's not a perfect process. But without this step of uh, saying any comment, I uh, can't assign the issue. It won't like GitHub won't let me assign people who've not, who aren't part of our core uh, contributor. I'm not sure how it generates this list, but I think these are members of the uh, Civic Wiki organization. Yeah, and so if, if somebody doesn't add that comment, I can't assign. Uh, but since they did uh, say they would like to work on this, I was able to assign them. And subsequently, they linked this. So when you mention, um, use a keyword, closes, fixes, and then an issue number, GitHub will intelligently sort of link the pull request with the given issue so that when the pull request gets merged, the issue also gets closed. Just saves us a little step. So they added uh, Django Stubbs and MyPy here, uh, updated the poetry lock, and added the, the two packages that were mentioned. MyPy is a runtime uh, and development time uh, static type checker that helps us write uh, code with confidence that we're not breaking other code that depends on that code and that we're using the uh, functions and classes that we're importing correctly, that we're providing them with the data types they expect. And Django Stubbs uh, is a compatibility layer for MyPy that kind of makes some of the uh, Django internal classes that might not have type uh, annotations or might not be possible to annotate the types. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how it works, but it, it provides those annotations uh, for MyPy compatibility. And then two uh, small configuration things. I just realized uh, the Django settings mod module is uh, incorrect here. Dang it. So I need to actually... <laughs> fix that bug. The core.settings is where, where that should be located. In any case, merge the pull request. I will uh, open a follow-up uh, bug report for that, get that MyPy configuration correct. And we're going to continue another part uh, later. We're going to work on what's called pre-commit to make sure that all of the commits uh, are clean. They have uh, well-formatted code and some other safety checks that can run every time you commit via Git. Anyway, thank you very much, Aporva, for your uh, contribution. And I'll try to remember to add one small follow-up task. Um, yes, so this was the um, issue definition I mentioned before. And now here's a, uh, an example of kind of where the uh, communication broke down a bit on a task. Um, 
you know, in better up, um, wanted to take this issue and number 1344 and open a pull request for it. And, you know, we're, we do, we're grateful for these pull requests and they got all the configuration correct from the documentation. They added all the lines that we needed. The problem was Davo had already claimed the issue. And in fairness to Davo, they have uh, the kind of first priority on this issue. And they just wanted to wait a little bit till Hacktoberfest started. They, they claimed it just right before uh, October 1st. And I did acknowledge and followed up with the assignment. So that was uh, that's how things should go. Uh, this issue was opened after Hacktoberfest and after the issue had been claimed. So we had clear signaling here that this issue was um, claimed. And Davo um, signaled me uh, to review their pull request. Uh, so in this case, uh, I just closed this issue um, while kind of explaining why um, we weren't going to be able to accept this contribution, but that there are other um, opportunities to contribute. And we'll gladly work uh, with BetterUp to find another issue. I can define uh, issues that are small in scope, and there's a couple of other ideas. But I just wanted to illustrate here uh, why we closed this particular issue, uh, pull request, without uh, resolving the issue. Um, and then we have a few pull requests that remain open. And I'll just run through these real quick. So again, relating to this signaling, there, uh, Simar, uh, Simariot Singh has uh, contributed code to fix this auto named migration task, 1351. And, but the task is unassigned. And there are several people who are interested. Now, Simariot or Simar has uh, started working on this task five days ago on September 29th before these other uh, contributors expressed it expressed interest. So I'm going to give them the opportunity and I've uh, mentioned that they need to claim this issue before I can proceed with the code review. I'm going to be kind of strict here. It's not always perfect and I've made mistakes here, but we're going to follow this process. It's important because we get several people who are interested in working on the same task when nobody's assigned. It's not easy for them. I think in a minute you'll see one where I messed up and I didn't assign somebody. So we're going to leave that open and I'll review it once we've got it properly assigned. So here's an example. I started uh, reviewing it. It's for issue number 1348. We've got, uh, they've claimed it. I acknowledged and assigned them. So that's all good order. And the issue here um, is to add a configuration so that when people are using um, editors with which support this editor config, they'll get automatic code formatting in certain uh, low level details like your indent size and whether to use tabs or spaces. Uh, here I've just added a couple of lint level suggestions and they can just freely uh, commit these changes directly to their branch uh, so to make it a little easier. Mm -hmm. Again this is just lint and grammar so we've left this one open and giving uh, Haseb a chance to make some small improvements. I think this is the one uh, where there's a little bit of a signal crossing. I believe they... Okay, yeah, here's the problem. Uh, well, Zero claimed this issue. I acknowledged it. And usually at that point, I immediately assign somebody. But for some reason, I had missed the assignment part. I'm not sure why. Because uh, I acknowledged them right away. And um, in the meantime, a pull request was open. But in fairness to Well Zero, they wanted to wait for, um, I think they wanted to wait for Hacktoberfest. I'm not sure. But uh, since I didn't assign them, I acknowledged. And then this other pull request was open. Uh, I had to kind of indicate to Muhammad that we're going to give Wax Zero, Wax Zero a chance to work on this task since they claimed it first. I will leave it open 
until we see a pull request pull request from wax zero whale zero since they're still assigned but you can see how confusing it can be and probably frustrating when you write a pull request that um, where somebody else is assigned to the issue we want to try to avoid that going forward here's another issue um, with a good intention and I think proper process we got an assignment and um, in Hacktober and the problem here was I didn't um, provide a, a screenshot of the expected uh, design and it was because I introduced that bug I showed a moment ago on the home page where our home page was broken because I removed a JavaScript file that was uh, responsible for the backbone logic that renders everything these backbone templates and uh, Gorkum fixed that and now today I was able to take the screenshot of how the home page looks with the backbone template and we just want to reproduce this home page with Django template syntax so it's a matter of porting the backbone JS templates over to Django template syntax and removing the backbone logic uh, since I didn't kind of communicate that clearly um, I think um, I Portova opened a pull request and they were using the landing page from our Civi Wiki um, website, which is a little static website. So the code that they brought over is a bunch of CSS and uh, a static image from this Civi Wiki, Civi.wiki website, which is not kind of correct. So I had to course correct this task. Hopefully we'll get them on the uh, we'll get on the right uh, path. We know the desired outcome here now a little bit better. All right, I got a few notifications going in the background. I'll probably need to wrap up here. Uh, another pull request. Uh, basically, we need to follow the process, adding the comment so other issue, uh, developers know which issues are under work. Before I'll review that, I, uh, I don't want to go further with review until we've got that assignment made. Uh, this was a good pull request, adding Django debug toolbar. The only thing I wanted uh, to do here is just uh, make sure that we leave this debug mode uh, as f defaulting to false. <laughs> um, so that if we deploy it to production and forget to set that debug to false, we don't want debug in production. We're not in anywhere close to production yet, but uh, just a small uh, suggestion and they can again commit the change by clicking two buttons so it's not too big of a deal otherwise the pull request looks great um, the main changes are adding this debug toolbar the middleware urls and you know installing in the project and finally i opened a pull request with several changes to developer documentation about this pull request workflow, how you need to claim an issue before starting to work on it, before opening a pull request, uh, just to try to clear up some confusion. I also had added that to our pull request template. It was already in there in a way, but not so direct. Like before you open a pull request, you need to claim it, the issue. Make sure nobody else has it claimed. Uh, so we're just gonna avoid confusion there. Uh, then the environment variables, um, we had some kind of crufty environment variables there. I cleaned them up and added documentation on how to automatically set them using a .n file. And Poetry has a way that when you activate the Poetry shell, it'll also activate virtual environment uh, variables in a .n file. And then I just ran an automated grammar checker called Grammarly over our uh, contributor guide just to kind of get everything on a good note. You know, that guide, it grows organically and we're not always paying attention to grammar. So I took just one opportunity to give it a full pass uh, with the Grammarly uh, grammar checker and it, uh, it found some improvements. So hopefully this is not too many uh, lines to review, mostly grammar and uh, developer documentation. So I'm waiting for review on that. Okay. Well, this has been quite a busy session, and as you can see, there have been many pull requests reviewed, some closed, some with changes requested, and some improvements in our um, process, how we uh, onboard new community members and steward issues and pull requests. Well, I appreciate your time, and I hope you're doing well. Have a great day.